Uh, I, I'm not so worried about uh, breaking things. And I always like to play with the latest stuff that Epic bring out because they always include some really cool new features in the new engines. Pull the distressing up a little bit here and there on some edges, make it look a bit bit more worn. I'm just going to jump back to the pen just just to do these edges here. Must be back around soon. Yeah, I think we're back there now. Okay. Snobby says you don't see anything about it in the release notes. Um, it's what were they calling it? Maybe Apex cloth or something I think they were calling it. I think the new one is Apex. I could be wrong, but it's cloth physics. Something to do with the cloth. They were completely redoing the way uh, Unreal handled cloth. The physics of cloth. So it'll be, if, if they've included it, it'll be mentioned uh, to do with cloth physics. I think they were calling it Apex. And I'm just going to increase my brush size here a bit. Um, and I'm just hitting the middle a little bit just to give just to wear off some of the gold a tiny bit. With a really large brush size, I'm just going to do that uh, here and there on the model as well. I think that's distressed that gold paint there enough. No, there are no changes to the cost physics. Uh, Show me new clothing tools. It may be um, part of the new clothing tools though. I'll check it out too after the stream. I'll update to the new version anyway because I always like to keep uh, using the latest version. Uh, let's check these little gold pieces now. Brass. There we go. I'm going to add a mask. Actually, now I've got nothing underneath of it so I need to place some material under the gold brass so I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with like a pewter or an iron let's have a look uh, 
I'm gonna go with this iron rough, I think. We'll put that underneath. And again, I'm, I'm just going over it here and there just to wear off some of the uh, brass. Oh, it's still listed as experimental early access. Damn. I was hoping they may have uh, made it official because it wasn't, it is actually in 416 as well, I th but you do have to uh, enable it as an experimental feature. And I generally don't like working with anything that's still uh, being labeled as experimental. Um, simply because I don't want to have any problems later on when I upgrade, when I update the project. So if they still aren't officially using it, then I, I won't either. If it's still an experimental feature, then we will use the old version if they haven't uh, enabled it by the time we come to do our cloth in our level. Is the, um, the combining of texture materials, is that in 417 Sniper? Do you see that in the release notes? Now with this, um, this galvanized iron we've got underneath of the um, brass, I'm just going to go into that and uh, we may just change a couple of the parameters, I think. Uh, we may start by changing the color a little bit. I might just bring it down. If we look in our viewport here as I'm doing it, I want more of a definition between the brass and the uh, underlying uh, iron. So I'm, I'm just pulling the colour down to make it a little darker grey, just to make that stand out a bit more. It was getting a bit lost because it was too light a grey, a grey I thought. Uh, and I didn't okay it so it Reverted back. I think that's a bit better. I just wanted more contrast between the brass and the underlying metal. All right, let's go up. No mention of the combining textures feature. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe it's an experimental thing still as well. Never mind. We can, like I said, I'll show you how to do it in your 3D program until they enable that feature anyway. If, if you're really concerned about too many draw calls on your objects. Again, no, don't get don't get too worried about that sort of thing unless you're using thousands of them. Yeah, it's always good to keep in the back of your mind, but yeah, don't get obsessed about it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we're going to come up and we're going to distress these gold leaves a little bit. Stressed. 
I'm also going to um, just do a bit of distressing on this gold uh, paint. Do the same thing here at the top. for a minute. Um, no, it says it's only while using the table that the model flashes. I'm sorry, what do you mean, Sniper? It's only while using the tablet that the model's flash. <laughs> yeah, I'm using... I'm actually using the mouse here at the moment simply because I want to get the distressing done really quickly so I can take it into Max to show you what I mean by um, combining your textures. I'm not using the tablet. Uh, is there a way to turn that off so that the model doesn't flash? Like if I use the pen here, I'm using the pen at the moment and I see the model flashing in and out. If I use the mouse, yeah the mouse it does it as well. Alright, let's just jump back in here really quick. Again, I'm just going to distress this a bit more. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, you were wondering. Yeah, no, I was wondering. I noticed that too. Uh, it may be an option that you can turn off in here somewhere. I haven't actually seen where that setting is though. But there could be an option to turn it off or it may just be the way that the program works. Uh, the way uh, we're talking about the, the model flashing in and out when you paint on it. See if I paint, I think it may be a feature built into Substance. So I'm holding down my left mouse button here and what it, what it's doing is it's highlighting just that object that I'm painting on. And when I let it go, it brings back the rest of the model. I think that may be the way that they've uh, created it so that if, you want, if I wanted to paint in parts of the model up here that are hidden, uh, I could just by holding down the mouse button. And then when I let it go, it brings the entire model back. That's to do with these material IDs. I think because we're using different material IDs, when we paint on the model, it isolates that part of the model. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's probably why they've done it. It's to allow you to paint in areas that you can't see, like up in here. It's probably the reason they've sort of built it into the program. And it, I think it's only happening too because we're using multi-material here. I think if you had everything on one material, your model wouldn't pop in and out like that. I'm not going to distress the black marble. Uh, I am going to do a bit of distressing on the cherry wood though, so let's jump back to that layer. 
and I already have a uh, lighter color underneath of it here. If I turn off the cherry wood, we'll see the lighter color. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to add a mask to the cherry wood and we'll start distressing it a bit just on these bits that stick out. Not all of them, just here and there. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a program called The Lex, L-E-X-X. -X. It was around years ago and I've just, uh, because I'm an Amazon Prime video member, uh, they have it on Amazon Prime, so I've started watching it again. It's really cool. It's twisted, but it's very cool. It's like a sci-fi series show. So if you ever want to watch something that's a bit different, I recommend it. It's very cool. Alright, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase my brush size quite large. And I'm just going to start distressing it in spots here and there with a very large brush. Just to get a bit of variety going in the colour. Alright, let's keep moving up here to the top of the table. I've got 15 minutes to get Max together so I can jump into Max and show you this uh, combining your materials together. Yeah, check it out, guys. Uh, just like I said, it's a really interesting. It was made. It was made a long time ago. It was probably made about oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago. So the graphics in it, it, it uses a lot of CG graphics. But remember, they were made like, like I said, about 10 years, 15 years ago. So uh, they don't really hold up to today's CG, but the story is really interesting and it's a really twisted storyline. So if you like something a bit different and a bit bit twisted, I can recommend it. It's really, really good. Very funny in parts as well. And it's on Amazon. I know it's on Amazon Prime Video, so because that's where I'm watching it. Again, I'm not doing the entire round uh, edge here. I'm just jumping around here and there to do a bit of distressing. Yeah, it was on television here in, in Australia years ago. So I'm sure it would have been on TV in Europe as well. It actually, it's actually made, <clears throat> I think it's a, um, <clears throat> a joint contribution between uh, the film board in Canada and uh, Germany. I think those two film boards created it. So uh, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if it wasn't shown in Europe. And like I said, it's uh, worth worth watching because it is funny. It is good. The story is really interesting, and I'm really big on uh, interesting stories. I mean, I like visual effects and everything too, but the story is more important to me. That's why when I play a game, I, I, I like a game that's got a really good story. Gonna do the same thing along the uh, edge, along the base here, and distress it a bit. So do check it out, though. If you've got Amazon Prime and you want something to watch and you're a bit bored one day, yeah, the series is it goes. It's quite a long series. It's like six, uh, ten episodes and six different. Uh, episodic uh, series so yeah it goes for a while 
but start with the first one, season one, episode one. Otherwise, you won't really know what's going on. I'm going to jump to the top of the table. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to make my brush really large. I'm just going to distress it here and there, just to give some variation to that cherry wood. So it, it makes the table look like it's uh, old and has been worn by things being placed on top of it. It's worn off the varnish and exposing the more of the lighter color wood underneath. I'm not going to do it any more than that. I'm just 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 hit it here and there. The last thing we have to do here is this uh, central column. Again, I'm going to make my brush smaller. Uh, and I'm going to just hit the edge. Actually, I'm on the wrong layer, so <laughs> uh, this was the one we want. Again, I'm going to make sure I add a, a, an alpha mask. I may actually jump to the pen for this. I think it's just I get a bit more control along these uh, edges. Just a little bit at the top there. Go large and just go over that area there a bit. just hitting the edges where I think uh, it would have worn, not the inside here because it's less likely to have been hit or knocked about in there. going to pull back, go back to the mouse, make sure I have a really large brush size again. I'm just going to um, do the same thing and just hit it here and there. That should be okay for what we want. I think we've just stressed it enough. Actually, I didn't do the base though, so better jump back down to the base. Um, 
and I won't do it by hand. I'm just going to again use the really large brush just to give some uh, color variation on that cherry wood at the base. The setting for what, Canoe? To change, to stop it from disappearing, is that what you're talking about? I'm assuming maybe that's what you mean by we were talking about when you were painting on an object, it was uh, making the rest of the model disappear. Um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't a setting in it in substance somewhere to turn it on or off. Uh, in edit settings, uncheck only display the selected material when painting. You're talking about in here? Oh, well, he's talking about this here. I need to display the selected material when painting, so if I turn that off, we jump back in. Make sure my brush is a bit smaller here. Get it angled so we can see the rest of the model. And yep, that's going <laughs> to, that works the way it says it does. So the model doesn't disappear when we paint on it, which I'm actually probably going to leave turned off because I prefer that. I don't like having the model disappear while I paint on it. It's distracting. If I'm concentrating on painting up something and the rest of the model's flashing in and out, distracts me. So I will leave it turned off. Um, I'm just going to save this uh, project here. We will export the textures. Make sure we set our path correctly. Uh, we for projects, model. Yeah, it is. It's nice to have the option. I agree. It's good that they've included that. So if you want it, you've got it. And if you don't, you can turn it off. Now I'm going to save all of these textures out as 2K. Yeah, I can see how it would be useful too. Like I said, if you want to get to parts of the model that may be hidden by other parts, it could be useful. Uh, but I'm going to keep it switched off because I don't like the distraction of having my model popping in and out. Uh, I'm going to keep all of these at 2K and uh, do an export. Now again, if I was to bring this into Unreal the way it is, we're using one, two, three, four, five different textures, all at 2K resolution. That's going to start chewing up a lot of your uh, texture memory. So we're going to uh, do it a different way. If I can get it to do it before I run out of time. Okay, so if I open the folder, we can see how many textures that's created. It's quite a few for one model. That's going to increase our texture, uh, our draw call quite a bit. So instead of doing it that way, what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into Max. I'm going to open up the uh, material editor. Uh, let's pull in a bitmap. I want that one. That's the black marble. I'm just going to pull that down there. I'm loading up the color maps here. That's the brass. My apologies for my phone going off in the background, guys. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is. That's the cherry wood. Max, what are you doing? 
up the gold paint. <coughs> and the one down the bottom is the uh, green cherry wood for the pillar in the middle, which is this one. I'm just going to hook them up to our um, shaders. Make sure we turn on uh, show material. to throw down and unwrap your VW. I'm going to open my uh, UV editor. You see that my UVs are a complete mess. That's because we were using uh, material IDs, separate materials for each part of the object. So I'm going to select them all. And in Max I have an option called Pack UVs. I'm going to use that. I can rotate and I can fill. I'll just give Max a second to um, work that out. <clears throat> now all of my UVs are packed into the uh, UV shell in a unique spot. Nothing is overlapping because uh, you're going to get shading problems if anything overlaps when you bring it into Unreal. But that's not doing as much good because um, we have all of our materials as separate objects. So I'm going to set the ID here to 2. I've noticed with Max 2018, even though it's behaves, it behaves itself quite well, uh, there are times when it does decide it wants to be a bit temperamental. It looks like it's... Uh, creating a bit of a problem there. I'm going to just delete that quickly, add another one. Let's see if we can set our ID before we do that. No. an option in here to set the material ID but I can't see it. They've changed everything around in 2018 with the UV mapping um, and I'm just curious as to why it's not letting me change my material ID. Anyway we'll change it to map channel 2. I think I got confused. They've moved things around on me. It's actually the map channel I was looking for. I'm going to move the UVs to channel 2. Again, I'm going to open up my UV editor. Um, again, I'm just going to make sure I select all of my UVs. Again, we're going to get it to pack the UVs. Alright, so now we have our UVs laid out in one object. So all of our UV maps are combined together in one. We're going to go to render and do a render to texture. Again, I'm just going to give Max here a minute to organize itself. All right, I'm just expand that a bit. Now, in render to texture, I want to make sure I'm using uh, existing channel and make a channel two. I'm going to add the diffuse map slot. I'm going to save it as a uh, 2K texture. 
we'll make sure it saves it into our folder. I'm going to save it as a PNG file because that's what we've been working with. I'll leave it called Pedestal Diffuse Map. Uh, 24 bits should be fine. Uh, so we have uh, Map Channel 2, Diffuse Map at 2K. I'm going to do a render. It's just complaining because I'm not telling it where I want it to put the new map. Pay no attention to the shadowing you see here. It doesn't actually uh, render that shadow into the diffuse map. It's just showing you in the viewport. All right. And now I'm going to jump back into my material editor. Just pull out one new more material and load up that bitmap we just saved out. Which is this one here. And you can see there's no shadowing showing in the actual uh, material itself. If I double click this and open it up. Even though we saw the shadow in Max, there is no shadow applied to the diffuse map. So we're just going to plug that into our uh, diffuse color. Again, we're going to make sure that we show shaded. I'm going to assign it to the model. It's going to mess it up initially. Again, we're going to go uh, into our uh, channel, where am I? channel info. And I'm going to cop the, copy the UVs from channel 2 into channel 1. And I'm going to remove or clear channel 2 because we don't need it, but it does increase file size. So now we have all of those separate textures combined together as one texture map. So instead of uh, five draw calls for each texture plus one for the model, now we only have one for the model and one for the texture. So until uh, Epic release the combined merge materials in 217 or 218 or whenever they're going to do it, you can do it in your 3D program by doing a render to texture. And that's what we've done there. But we may leave it there for today, guys. I do want to thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and for watching. Uh, I will be back on again tomorrow and we'll continue doing some work on our Art Deco building. Um, remember, guys, if you're not sure when I'm live, you can keep an eye on my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D because I always post there when I go live. Or you can follow my Twitch channel uh, to, get a, uh, to get reminded that way. Thanks, Canoe. I'm glad you found that useful. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really handy thing to know if, you, if you're really worrying about reducing draw calls in your level, doing a render to texture in your 3D program uh, to combine them all into one texture, particularly if you're using uh, multi-material IDs in Substance Painter. You're quite welcome, Sniper Echo. Again, thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and for watching. I will be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific in the US, 10 a.m. in Australia, 1 a.m. in the UK. You guys have a great night, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you guys.